Amen. If you have your Bibles, let's turn John 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents. Are you ready for this one, folks? You need to listen. Let this temper your attitude when you go through something. I'm trying to help someone tonight. But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Can God trust you with a trial to act right? Yes. Now, I, I know, see, see, the disadvantage of being the pastor is I, you know what, you, you get, you, 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 you can't not be spiritual and, and maintain. So you get around. I, I, I know your spirits. I can be around you a little bit. Y'all been around, y'all know when I get hacked off, right? Man, Brother Cody, you know he gets the glasses come off and he's like, What, you don't think I read you like a book? Yeah, that's right. I, can you read me? Y'all better not do that, but the crow find out about that. Y'all, y- right? Yeah, yeah. Well, hello? Can we be real? It's Wednesday night. Wednesday, Wednesday night word, all right? <sighs> but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Is God wanting to work something in your life? I hope so. I hope you're ready. I hope you're ready to have a testimony. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he hath thus spoken, he spat on the ground. You're missing something I'm going to bring out in a minute made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Then he tells this man with mud in his eye, and Brother Terry, he's blind. Did he put the mud in there to make sure everybody, well, he wasn't really blind. This guy's got some earth and sunglasses on right now. Do you hear what I'm saying? Go wash in the pool of Shalom. Yeah, I'm blind. I'm going to go walk my way over. Yeah. Which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Verse 24. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, You know, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, and now, I see. now I see. Now listen, I, I want to talk on the pillar of an undeniable testimony. The pillar of an undeniable testimony. Any, anybody here have an undeniable testimony? Jesus, we love you. We praise you. There's some meat on these bones tonight, God. There's there going to be some people that struggle and are going to have to change their outlook to please you. They're going to have to realize, wait a minute, I've, I've, kind of done, I've kind of done God a little dirty. He'd been good to me for a long time, and I've gotten to this place where I've allowed a little bit of uh, what I thought should be done, how I should get in the way, and I've gotten a little bitter. I've gotten a little sideways. I, I've kind of sat on my laurels on a great God. Help me, Lord, to restore that undeniable testimony that you've handed me, that your light may shine and people may see the good works and glorify God for the great works that he does in mankind. Everybody say in Jesus' name. You can be seated. Briefly, testimonies aren't a New Testament thing. If you look in 1 Samuel, before David faced Goliath, he had to give saw his testimony. Well, 
Well, let me help you. I have people all the time give me their testimony because they want to do something in the church. I can sing. I did this. I did that. Cool. Be faithful to prayer. Be faithful to practice. Do all that. And come on. And I, 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 man, I know how to speak. I've been called. Okay. Be faithful to prayer. <laughs> Be faithful to church. <laughs> Because you need that testimony before you get up for people to believe what you're saying or singing. Paul gave somewhat of a testimony in 2 Corinthians when he went through the list of all the things that he went through. And he ended all with, I, I will glory in the things which concern my infirmities. You see, if you've got things that happen to you in your life, they're not there for you to walk around in woe and bitterness and complain. They're to say, God brought me through. But. See, sadly, we make a couple of bucks we shot about to raise. We get some nice things. We, oh, yeah, look at my stuff. And all the time, nobody knows anything about the God you serve. We live in a world now that has forced its paradigm on us that it's about stuff, things, and comfort. In fact, the Bible says in Matthew 7, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth, everybody say does, doeth, the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that Lord, that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils? How, how many has been doing that recently? You ever wonder why that it's the next phrase? That has stopped you? Because in thy name done many wonderful works. Wonderful to who? I love living my life doing wonderful things that I like. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Then I will profess unto them, those folks. I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Iniquity is lawlessness. In other words, I'm not gonna, in other words, those that don't allow the word to govern their life. The word of the world's gonna govern you. You have to be honest with yourself. Yes. This thing with God works. But you have to decide who you're gonna serve. Okay, your testimony comes from surviving or thriving in the test that comes your way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man which built his house upon the rock. How many know that before, when we started this series, that's exactly the story that I used to get us started? Understand what we call wonderful things is not what God calls wonderful. Let me, let me, let me say this to you. Let me tell you how, show you how good God is in a phrase. The devil exposes your weakness to destroy you. God exposes your weaknesses to develop you. Anything I say over this pulpit, anything I do that marches right down and stops in your doorstep or in your living room and points right at you and say, you need to fix this, it's to develop you. I, I, I don't want to fail this. A testimony, you can't say the word testimony without test. Now you have to understand something. I wasn't your best school attender. I, I, you know that whole scholastic stuff? I wasn't all in, Carol. I, you know, I just, the only part I liked about it was people there to hang out and do stuff and get in trouble and get sent to the principal's office and get detention. And sadly, I was one of those guys that, you know, back in the day when they still spanked you at school. Yeah. Principal paddled my behind. My third grade teacher, Mrs. Scheiber, how do I remember all this? It was a big moment for me. 
I'm leaning over. I'm looking at her while this principal's polishing my behind. I'm looking at her, and I'm mad. She starts crying. She didn't show up every day to see a kid get punished for being stupid. She was there to develop me. Careful. It can be uncomfortable in the church sometimes because God doesn't want you just a part of some club that you don't change and you, and you miss not only your testimony, but giving glory to God and going to heaven. Don't, don't go. To, people say, man, why are you going to church? Let's go to the club. You better believe the club's going to be fun for a moment, a season. Don't 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 compare apples and oranges. Stop, stop, get things correct. I'm, I'm here to be developed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So who you give your weaknesses to determines who and what you will become. If you give your weaknesses to the devil, he's going to destroy you. You give them to God, he will develop you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we know that we have two builders. One's building on the rock. One was building on the sand. And the premise behind it is because each one of us is going to face storms. What Sister Denise faces will not exactly be what Sister Carol faces or what Sister Crow and what Brother Corey faces will not be what Brother Lawrence. But we will all face storms. We're, we're each going to have storms. So, so, there will be storms that are launched on purpose by the enemy. Just ask Job. And then you know what? There's going to be regular storms in life that the enemy is going to say, well, let me use this. Let me use this to tear down their walk with God, to tear down that spiritual house that they're trying to build. You understand, the enemy of your soul is constantly attacking us. He wants to damage and destroy all God is building in you. It is never more depressing than to watch someone who started making advances in God to walk out. I've, I've seen it. I've lived for God 38 years now. I looked it up. Oh, I'm old. I've seen people come and go. But the saddest part is when I watch them come back and they're where they were the last time I saw them. And they had, uh, they had potential. They had, uh, they had so much they could have done. And now they walk back in and they're just asking God. They, they've gotten back to, oh, just, just God, just save me. They, they, they've got it back in perspective, but they've lost the testimony. The enemy's purpose is, to st is still to steal, kill, and destroy. Those trials, tests, and problems come to every one of us. No one is exempt. We read about this in Matthew chapter 7, two men building, encountering storms. One house stands, the other suffers a terrible fall. There is no indication that the houses were different, and we know the storms were the same. The distinction is found in the foundation. One is built on a rock and the other is built on sand. Jesus made the interpretation plain for us. The, the one man heard the word of God and did it. The other man heard the word of God and did it not. The simple difference proved to be a significant one. Storms are symbolic for those of you that still might be confused or symbolic or metaphorical of the things that happen in our lives that reveal our life's choices that reveal our belief and trust systems. Trust. Everybody say trust. trust. Belief. Everybody say belief. So the storms also include that inner struggle of right and wrong, morality, immorality. Will you be honest or dishonest, faithful or unfaithful, a believer or a non-believer? You're not able to avoid these questions. Who you are, 
what you choose to do answers them. You can say you're honest all day long, but life will prove. You can say you love God all you want. We can sing the song, but life will prove. How you build is undeniable. What you love, what you're all about will be shown. The storm of compliance and compromising hits all of us. It hit the three Hebrews, and we know that they said, they answered the king, O oh, king Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer the innocent. We, they, in other words, we've already made the decision. In other words, the test, the trial, the struggle is not going to change my choice. At some point, you have to have a made-up mind. Job declared, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You have to understand, and I want to say this for the benefit of the young. These were young people. God rewarded their stand. A lot of times you don't see the benefit of living for God and holding on to the standards of the church until after you've already messed it up. Daniel 1 and 17 says, and these four children, speaking of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Why? Because they wouldn't even eat the food of the culture they were living in. They didn't, no, not only did they not get involved in all the other things, they weren't even going to eat that food. Daniel purposed in his heart in Daniel 1 he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. So God did more than just deliver them. He gave them wisdom. He gave them favor. He gave them knowledge. And at the end of it all, it said in Daniel the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Those are the names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them. He found them ten times better than all the magicians, and astrologers that were in his realm. Wow. Young people, I'm telling you, you're going to be faced with choices. You're going to be faced with serious moral choices in your young life. And yes, it's not a matter of will you smoke this or not that? Will you sleep there or not? The way it literally comes down to you will either believe and trust God or you won't. You will either please God or you will bow to peer pressure and walk out on God. You choose to live for God when you choose, refuse to bow. And when you do that, I believe God has some great things for yes. you. I believe God can impart knowledge and wisdom and favor. And God just does something special with people that will give their heart to them. It's, 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 it's not only that you choose with your words, but you choose with your actions and your life. And the testing is what gives you your test testimony. Remember, both the builders were busy. One was right, one was wrong. Where they chose to build mattered. And though it didn't, the, the judgment wasn't right away because it's easy to look and see, well, they're getting away with it. Come on. The sad thing is, and I'll put this in it, you don't see the scars. You don't see the inner. You don't see everything. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us in Matthew, but as in the days of Noah, so shall becoming the son of man. He's, all these things are going on. And it says, two shall be in the field. The one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord cometh. In other words, they were like those two builders. They looked alike. They were busy, but there was something different between the two. Life boils down to decisions and choices that each and every one of us has to make and are making, young or old, 
poor, wealthy. No one is exempt from the consequences of your heart choices. Deuteronomy tells us, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. You have both choices. It's all right there. Do you realize in the garden, every tree was fine but one? What did they choose? He said before you life, death, blessing, and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. We choose if we're going to obey. We choose if we're going to do God's will. Let me tell you something. You're not going to stand before God. I didn't know you wanted me to do that. Do you realize the Bible gives us the entire Old Testament for an example? You didn't know? Did you not read it? Did you not see? No one told David to defend those sheep, but he did. You go through the list. You're not going to be able to sit before God. Well, if I knew you'd want me to do it, what do you mean? You knew Enoch pleased God. You, you knew what Isaiah and all, you knew what all these guys did, but well, you couldn't figure it out. No one's going to stand before God. Well, I knew if he really wanted me to go or do or give. You, stop. Stop that. We know, but we choose. I choose if I'm going to fill my life with God or the world. I, I choose if I'm going to have a prayer life or I'm going to come running in and out of here at the last minute. We choose who and what we are. You're going to be on fire or you're going to be someone we have to try to light all the time. You choose. You choose if you're going to be a good wife or not. You choose if you're going to be a good husband or not. Can I, can, can I say, wait a minute, we got some pretty amazing opportunities to choose. We choose if we're going to do God's will. We choose if our lives will be grounded on the word of God. It is a commitment to build on the right foundation. How many remembers the Proverbs verse that I gave at the beginning? Because I want us to consider that verse again in Proverbs 91. Wisdom hath builded her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. The Bible indicates when wisdom is building a house, there are seven pillars on which that house is founded. These pillars or ways are, are centered on that rock-solid foundation, and they become the, that connection to it. They, they're the strong tenants of a house, which is solidly connected to the rock on which it stands. There, 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 there's not a shingle in the storm or aesthetics that the elements are going to be able to change because it's founded correctly and built on a rock and established according to his sayings. Amen? There, there are items which define and frame the very nature of that house. You're building a house. You, you're building who and what you are. You, you can't deny it. You, 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 you can't look back and say you did that back then. Those pillars have to exist for the whole time or the whole building comes down. You can't say I'm faithful last year and not be faithful. No, you got to keep that pillar. And so the pillar that I'm addressing in order to build a spiritual house that's going to stand must contain, listen to me, listen, an undeniable testimony. Yes. Let's look at the story of the man who received that notable miracle in Scripture. When we're first introduced to him when Jesus passes by and sees him, a man who was blind since his birth. Jesus' disciples want to know who done wrong. <laughs> what did he say? Nobody. Let me, let, me, let me put that out there. You can have everything in the world and be lost. You can have nothing of this world and be saved. You can have all the comforts and not a worry in the world 
and be lost. You can be a beggar on the side of the road and be saved. Be careful that we don't flip the script and join the world and realize, man, I got a lot of wonderful things, but I don't have that relationship with God. Did his parents sin? What happened? There has to be an explanation for this, right? We all want to know why. Come on. Remember when you were two? You had one word that your parents had to hear over and over again. Why? Why? But why? And it, it, hello? Why is this happening to me? You don't have to be a two-year-old to say that. Come on, some of you. Why do I say that? I got to bring every thought into conjecture. Because there's some subjection. Because I understand there's a okay, God, why am I? Do we not get to the point where we think, look, I had to be grandfathered into this flowery pathways of ease situation. I got my time in. I, 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 why do I have to go through this? Why hasn't God already fixed this? Why? 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 Come on, somebody. Why? Why am I facing this right now? Jesus cleared up the matter for his disciples that day, and it, which might be our answer too. He answered, neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I wonder how many times in our negative lack of prayer, lack of faith and belief, just self-entitled, why am I going to bless God? You know, Sister Riddell, I appreciate you. And I couldn't help but think about you the whole time I was getting this ready. There's some of you, you wouldn't lift a hand. You don't want to hurt yourself to worship God with any exuberance, but if you ought to pay attention to this lady last Sunday. That's a testimony. I wonder how many of us deny the testimony of glorifying God. Is Sister Vernell perfect? No. But everything physically should say, sit there. Don't, don't get yourself uncomfortable. But when you've been through some stuff and you, 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 you're struggling in every area of life and then the doctor says some horrible things and you still thought. Yes. That testimony gives glory to God. Not for us to go, okay, no, to say, that's how I need to act. That's how I need to be. Why am I sitting down on my duff, absolutely ignoring, okay, let me tell you, I don't know about you, I may have lived for God for 38 years, but I'm just glad and excited as I am the day I walked into a church. You may have let bitterness, ungratefulness, and unthankfulness Penetrate me thick. You ought to have one. You bought in the world's idea of success. But success is an undeniable testimony that I'm going to praise God whether it's raining or sun shining, whether I'm healthy or sick, whether I feel like it or not. I will give glory to God and maintain my undeniable testimony. I got to have that pillar in my life. I got to make sure my kids see me worship God no matter what. I got to make sure my church family sees me worship God. I got to make sure the world sees me worshiping God. There's got to be an undeniable temple that God is still good today. Why would God make him blind? Jesus assured that his condition was not one of punishment, 
but rather potential. He was not put down. He was set up. He was about to have an amazing testimony that was enough. He, he was about to have a pillar built into his life, a pillar of an undeniable testimony of the work of God. Are you faced with some situations? Have you faced some difficulties? Because you just might be set up too. You just might have been handed something so God could do something great in your life. What God is doing in your life right now will in time be yet another story that you can talk of the power of God. I've said it before and I'll say it again. A person with an experience is never at the mercy of a person with an opinion. I hear all the arguments and someone someone wanted me, and it was, I think it was at the Bible study the other night, wanted me to listen to some dude because he's influencing kids. <laughs> Interesting to listen to, but I, I didn't need to hear it. In the first 30 seconds, he was so far out of scripture, I didn't need to hear. So you better hide the word in your heart that you might not sin against God. Some of us, some of us got up and sang and preached, but we don't have a life that backs up what we've been saying and singing. Can you imagine if I bickered and complained all the time and then told you how bad and did this and always point to this situation, and then I get up here, well, let me get up and preach about God. <laughs> if we never go anything, you never go through anything, you don't get this pillar. If you don't allow God to help you overcome something, you don't get this pillar. If God can't trust us with storms, we're never going to know his peace. If God can't take us through a sickness, we can't testify he's a healer. If times never get hard, we can't declare he's a provider. We are still saved by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. If you, how many want to know the miracles of God, but you better get ready to need one. But wait a minute, right there, some of you. Uh, I don't know who I was talking to the other day. You're talking about preachers and talking about a situation where this evangelist came down to this, this lady in a wheelchair. And uh, he was praying and she was praying. And he started laying hands on her and praying for healing. And she grabbed his hand and stopped him. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want God to heal me. He'll stop sending me my check. <laughs> there are some of you, God, don't, don't heal me. Then I'm going to lose my way to just sit here and be bitter. Then, then, then I'm going to have to shout. I'm going to have to preach again. I'm going to have to sing again. I'm going to have to believe again. No, God, let me right here. Let me alone. Don't touch me. I'm going to that altar. I'm not going to shout. Gonna... Don't kid yourself. Young, young, young people, listen to me. Get yourself next to someone with a testimony. Put yourself next to. You want to get next to someone that worships. Don't sit next to someone like a lump on a log. Don't get next to someone all they want to talk about worldly stuff. and what. Get next to someone with a testimony. Get next to someone talking about Jesus. Get next to someone that clicks with the butt. Because when we go through it and God comes through, we come out on the other side with an undeniable touch. Get next to those people. Uh, you see, see, I can't know or say he's a prayer answer just because someone told me he was. Hear me? I can't see he can make a way just because I've seen him make a way for other people. I can't really know or declare to that he can see me through on the basis of the reports of other people. But I know when I can declare it because he's done it for me. I I talk about what he's done for me. I, 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 my, 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 see, 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 some of you, well, I don't have fire like him. No, 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 no. You don't have an undeniable testimony like him. Maybe you've set it aside. Maybe you've placed it down. Maybe the things of the world have caught, caught, caught. I don't know. But if you but once was lost, uh, but now you're found, that's enough. That's a, ah, get back. You don't know. But I know. 
You got all your stuff. You got all your comfort. I really don't. God may just. Oh. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. He delivered me from my old self. I'm still excited about that. He's kept me. You know what I said? He's kept me for 38 years. The same old arms being lifted. I can say this. Life hasn't been good to me, but God always has. And I'm not blaming God for life. You go ahead. But I'm not. I got an undeniable testimony. No matter what life throws at me, he's still good to me. He's healed me. He's delivered me. He's provided for me. He's saved me. He's rescued me. He's set me free. He's forgiven me. He broke my addiction. He filled me with good. I got a testimony. You can't take my testimony. Brother Joe. You got a testimony. That's why you're always on fire. You can respect the gray-headed person going through a little hell, getting up talking about heaven. It's important. And I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a Nolan Ryan curveball at you. Some of y'all don't even know who that is. Anybody here know who that is? Okay. Obviously Carl does. <laughs> It's important to understand that sometimes the testimony matters more than the testifier. Because it's interesting how there are some rather obscure individuals who can testify or in the Bible. People don't really regard when we read it. We know the name of the servant of the high priest whose ear was cut off by Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane. Malchus. There's really only a couple of verses about him. We know the name of the guy who fell asleep while Paul was preaching for a long time. Was it a Wednesday night? And he fell from the window. Eutychus. We got six verses. We are given the names of some men who traveled with Paul for a season. And I'm talking about, we always know the Silas's and the Timothy's. But what about men like Sopater? Or the unforgettable Secundus? Both mentioned only in one verse of scripture in Acts 20 and 4. And there accompanied him into Asia, Sopater of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Secundus, and Gaius of Derby, and Timotheus, and Asia. All these guys. He gave us names of other people. Their names are given to us. But in our text, the central figure of that entire discourse. All those verses, an entire chapter, were never given his name. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man. What's up, dude? Little fella? Homie? Buddy? Pal? I? A man! He's never given a name. We're given all these other names. Ah, so Peter didn't help me. Really, there's no deep theological sermon I can pull from that other than what you're getting right now. <laughs> but could it be? Because in this story, we're not giving them as name because it's not about him. You've been through something? Maybe it's not about you. It's about Jesus. Can, 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 can we ease out of that throne and realize I'm not going through this. It's not about me. It's for him. 
We, we, okay, consider another guy, the pool of Bethesda in John 5. The place is full of people needing healing, right? There are a bunch of people there, John 5 and 3. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. But Jesus only healed one. There's that question. Come on, what's the question? Why? <laughs> well, guess what? I'm not sure, Lacey, that we have to have all the answers. You're getting some of your answers right now if you're paying attention. And thank you for that question. That's awesome. I love it when people in the church text me questions like that. I don't have to have all the answers. Brother Dadboard, that silenced a lot of hot shots. If you'd asked me when I was about 35, 36, I had all your answers. Ask me, I told you back then, psh, the world needed me. God and the men needed me. And all you older men forgot when you was that age and thought you was all that in a bag of chips too. Boy, you, come on. If any of you were even living for God back then. Anybody living for God at that time? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You got the Holy Ghost. You got that call of God. It was undeniable. They laid hands on you. You got men of God telling you, that's why you need me in that prison ministry. The only thing good about that kind of ignorance is at least you're going. <laughs> the sad about it is you get a little wisdom and all of a sudden you find your seat. Could it be, could it possibly be we don't have all the answers partly to produce what happened next? Jesus told him to take up his bed and walk. There's that question again. Why? Why the bed deal? He says in John 5 and, 5 and it says, Jesus said to him, rise, take up the bed and walk. Why can't he just say, rise, you're healed, good, we're good, we're moving, okay, right? How many of us have prayed, God, just give me a word. This guy got a sentence, he got instructions, he actually got specific things to do. Why did he have to pick up his bed? Same principle applies here if you're paying attention. Because it was the Sabbath. And he was not allowed to carry anything on the Sabbath. And so it caused the question that created the environment where he had to point to who? Some of you are so afraid to put yourself on the line, but you don't understand getting put on the line makes you point to Jesus. <laughs> the reason you don't know that and the reason you run from issues and run from problems because it's all about you and not about him. That's painful to take. That's, that's a tough pill to swallow. I know it is. And so when, it caught, when, he, when he carried his bed, it caused him to be in a situation where this presented Jesus the opportunity to preach to them. Could it be that the testimony of the healed lame man was designed to open doors for the truth to be preached? Could the situation be that arose in your life that Christ would be preached? But because you spend so much time in the comforts and avoiding situations and you want to walk, and forgive me because I do this too, I want to walk humbly and softly and silently. That the situation I'm avoiding stopped me from pointing to the Jesus they needed to hear. Could it be that the testimony in our lives is for that same purpose? Could it be that the, the things that God has done is not just to make us feel good, not just to encourage us, but also about an avenue for 
the truth to reach people? How are we going to reach the world if we're hiding in it? It's not about us. To do the wonderful things is an inclination that you're saying you did wonderful things for Jesus, but stop and ask yourself, was it really for Jesus? Did you buy that for Jesus to get glorified? Did you do that for Jesus? No, I did it for me. Church, it's still all about Jesus. I wonder what would happen if we turned to giving God all the credit for the amazing things in our lives. I wonder what... I wonder what would happen if we would get, get back to being a church of believers where we give God all the credit for everything in our life. What, what would happen when anybody met us? We would be quick and clear to give our testimony about the greatness of Jesus in our lives. What would happen if, if it wasn't about trying to be a show off or, of what, and we all, oh, God did this for me, but funny, it's all about you, and it's not about him. And so those wonderful things aren't about him. They're about you, and so he never knew you. He doesn't know you. So this account of what happened to the blind man is really kind of hard to imagine. He's just sitting there, minding his own business, kind of like some of you are right now. Get out of my living room. Get out of my drive. Just get off my street for a few minutes, Pastor. I wonder if this, the guys in, in, that I'm talking about here are glad Jesus came down their street. Come on, are you still glad when Jesus marches right down your lane in a church service? Or have we become so worldly that we sit here? I got my Jesus thing, but don't you? I got Jesus in my little box. And I put them in my little pocket. And when I leave here, I go do me, myself, and I. Can we be real? Can we realize, no, this is bigger than me. So he's, he's just minding his business and begging a little bit. Maybe he's shaking that little cup. Seeking some cherry. You know, we aren't told. But we do know is that he didn't ask for Jesus to do anything for him. There, there was no cry out to the master in this story. Now, I could preach that in plenty of other places. Because some of us need to get back to that place where we'll cry out to God. But not tonight. And suddenly Jesus stopped. You see, see I, I think Jesus suddenly stopped in my life. Jesus just stopped. And if you read it, he just literally spits and makes mud. And goes, it's not like the dude can run, he's blind. And he's got this, 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 this mixture of spit and dirt. It's called mud. And he smears it in this guy's eyes. It said John 9 and 6, and when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. No, we understand it as anointing, but the guy's blind. He can't see yet. He's just got mud in his eye. It didn't cause him to see any less. But he's stand, it was sitting, stand, whatever, he's there with the mud in his eyes. And then he's given instructions. I'm not sure just what that experience was like, and I'm not encouraging anybody here to make some mud out in the church yard and come in and try to rub it in my eyes or in anybody else's. But this guy, having been born blind, probably had hearing that was acute, probably had the ability to hear what was going on, and just maybe he heard the sound of the activity and maybe even the conversation before him. Did he draw back? I don't know. But with mud in his eyes, then the instructions given, go wash. Yeah. Let me go get wash this off my face. 
He's told to go to the pool of Siloam. No idea why that one, but here's what I know. Listen to me. You don't have to understand what God is doing for him to move. You don't have to understand everything for God to move. I don't have to figure it out. I don't have to have all the answers. Can, 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 can we just go ahead and step back a minute from our bad selves and realize that when he spoke the words, that if we'll just obey his word, something miraculous can happen. If we could just get back to that place and just obey the word of God, if we could just step back and go, you know what? If this blind man with mud in his eyes could simply do, he didn't go to any other place to, to what? He went where he was told and washed his eyes out. Let me say this. I could not explain all the theological implications when I got, bap got baptized back in 1986. I can't tell you. I didn't know anything about God. I, 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 I could quote two verses back then. One of them was Acts 2.38. I had no theological understanding I had not been given some revelation of God, of the understanding of the entire Bible. To, okay, yes, no one is baptized any other way in Scripture other than in Jesus' name. There was no other baptismal service in the Bible other than in Jesus' name. So I can't tell you all the theological ramifications of being baptized in Jesus' name. But what I do know, it worked. It worked. It worked. I don't understand why the mud in the eye, but it worked. I may understand why a drop of oil that we do our people, I don't know, but it works. I can't explain exactly how I can live better on 90% than I can the 100, but I know it works because I have an undeniable testimony of 38 years of knowing it works. <laughs> so when that man made his way to the pool, it probably wasn't easy. There was a, probably a whole lot of things of people surrounding him to see what would happen. But he got there. He put the water on his eyes, and then something miraculous happened. He was given his sight. There's no science, no biological clue as to why. I can't imagine what it was like. All of a sudden, all the colors of God's creation exploded before him. The warm sunlight of day that he previously had never seen was now dazzling his eyes. Uh, every sight was a wonder. Every glimpse was a miracle. Every look blurred by tears of joy and gratitude. I can't understand the mud and the spittle, but it worked. And now every voice had a face. Uh, everything was different. Everything changed. Jesus had touched him. And now this man had an undeniable testament. I don't understand it, but it happened. It worked. I, I can't give you all the ramifications the ins and out, but I have an undeniable testimony. And let me tell you something, fella. You may be in the Bible when 2,000 years ago, but I got one too. I got one too. I got one too. And I pray that we never get so far removed from that first moment of redemption that we forget what it felt like to be delivered. I pray that we never get so used to the freedom that we feel, that we forget that moment of liberty and what it felt like. I, 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 every song is a right to praise God. Every service is the privilege to attend. Everyone and everything is a blessing to the church. Can you go back for a minute? Can you just step back for a minute and remember just how good it feels to be saved, to be touched by Jesus and grab a hold of that undeniable testimony of a pillar in your life and say, he's worthy. I'm grateful. I'm thankful he touched me.
I'm sure the critics lined up. First the neighbors and the Pharisees. Even his parents distanced themselves from him. It's amazing how even friends and family get uncomfortable around someone who's been changed. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, 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 see. I, I, you see, I have experienced. I, we liked it better when you were a drug dealer. Oh, family said that to me. We liked it better when we didn't know where you were. They tried to pin this man down. Who did this? How did it happen? It couldn't have been this Jesus guy. He's a sinner. And he answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. I can't answer all your questions about Jesus. I, I don't guess I even know if he's a sinner, but there's one thing I know for certain. This time yesterday, I had a beggar's cup. Uh, this time yesterday, I walked around with a white cane and a guide dog. This time yesterday, darkness marked my way. This time yesterday, I couldn't see it all. This time yesterday was just like all my previous days, dark and grim, but now everything's different. Everything's changed. Everything's new, and it's all because Jesus touched me. He had an undeniable testimony I wonder anybody have an undeniable testimony here tonight uh, is there anybody here that has an undeniable testimony that Jesus has done something in your life oh I used to be an addict now I'm free I used to be depressed but now I rejoice I used to be sick and now I'm whole I used to hate but now I love I used to be a sinner but I've been redeemed I used to be greedy but now I love to give and nobody can take it away from me. You have to understand, I need the pillar of an undeniable testimony in my spiritual house because then it will never crumble. It helps me stand because God has been good to me. Every time I come by that pillar, I got a reason to rejoice. Every time I think about that, Oh, I get to rejoice. How about those 10 unnamed lepers as I bring this to a close? And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice, oh, I wish God would restore, or some of you would restore to God your loud voice and glorify God. Oh, I wish someone... I wish someone had been touched and, uh, and delivered and, and blessed by God with that loud voice and glorified God like this. Step. He fell down on his face at the feet, giving him thanks. Worshiping and giving thanks is a good thing. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the, the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalms 18, the psalmist says that God has delivered him from the enemy and lifted him up above all those that rise up against him. In verse 49, it says, therefore I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen. And sing why wow, they're going to point to Jesus. I can rejoice in the middle of a trial. Yeah. When I stand by this pillar, God's been good to me. I don't know how everything is in your life, but I know this. Devil, I got a verse that you're going to have to deal with in my life. The Lord hath done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. If I, where's all my glad folks tonight? Where's all my glad folks tonight? I, I wonder if my uh, my glad folks will come around. Now, now if you're not glad, you can stay there. I'll, I'll put you on, but if you're glad, come around, come around the front with me. 